Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a custom ratings control in Flutter. Now I'm starting with main.dart file, and you can see that in the main.dart file on the right hand side is running on the Android emulator. It doesn't really display anything because there's nothing to display because the children over here doesn't really have anything. So let's go ahead and create a rating control. So inside the widgets folder, I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. And I'm going to go ahead and call it rating.dart. All right. Let's go ahead and create a class called rating, which extends the state full widget. So I'm just going to go ahead and say state full widget. There we go. Now, when we're using the state full widget, this means that this is going to maintain the state. Now, the state will be maintained by a private class, and I will call it rating with an underscore, and it's going to extend the state for the rating class that we created earlier on. Now, for this to be a state full widget, we're going to go ahead and override the one of the functions which is called the create state, which is going to return rating. So let's go ahead and say create state. And this is going to go ahead and return us the rating. Perfect. In order to create the rating, we do need a couple of different things. But what is the maximum rating? So we're going to go ahead and say maximum rating or the maximum limit, whatever you want to call it. What is the maximum rating or the number of stars that we should create? So maybe we should say maximum stars or number of stars. You know, you can you can go ahead and create any property name that you like. I'm just going to go ahead and go with the original one, which is maximum rating. All right. The other thing that we want to do is this is our rating control, our rating widget. So whenever it finds a rating, it is going to give the rating back to the caller. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a function, kind of like a closure that you can pass into a function. So on rating selected. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and implement the rating initializer constructor. And you will go ahead and pass in the on rating selected. So that's a mandatory thing you need to pass in. And the optional one is the maximum rating. So I'm just going to say maximum rating. If you don't pass, we're just going to say that's going to be five, meaning five stars. Well, total five stars, and then you can say three star, four star, whatever. The number of stars being displayed. Okay. Now we will go and jump into our rating underscore rating widget that will be responsible for obviously creating, displaying the rating. I'm going to go ahead and implement the build function. And inside the build function, I'm just going to call the function build body. This function doesn't really exist, so we will have to go ahead and create our custom build body function. The build body function will be responsible for building the user interface, building the body. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to return us a widget, build body, and there we go. All right. Now, how many stars do we should display? Well, we should display all five stars, obviously, right? I mean, all five stars will be displayed. And then if the user clicks or taps on the three star, then only three will be filled out. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the stars. So I'm going to go ahead and say stars equals to list of widget. And I'm going to go ahead and use the generate function and going to just generate all the different stars. So this start widget dot maximum rating. Now, what is this? This start widget dot maximum rating. So this maximum rating is defined inside our stateful widget. So in order to reach that, we have to say widget. So it's going to basically be talking about this guy right there. Because we are inside a different class, the class that is maintaining the state. So this is how you reach to the properties that you have declared in your stateful widget, which is rating. The second part is actually the function that is going to be called every single time that this loop is going to run. So what do we want to do in that scenario? Well, 
we want to create something and return it. Okay, then what do we want to create? Well, we want to create a rating star. And that rating star, we can also tap on. Like, I can tap on it. I can press it on that rating star 3. So it will be 3 stars will be filled out. In order to make the rating star uh, tappable, we have to wrap this with gesture detector. So I'm going to go ahead and return something over here, which will be a gesture detector. The gesture detector child will be some sort of a view of a rating star, which we're going to build. So I'm just going to go ahead and say build rating star, pass in the index, on tap, and we'll do something when you actually tap something. There we go. Now, obviously, there is no function called build rating star. So this is a function that we need to implement that is going to build the rating star. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and create a separate function, build rating star, which is going to take in the integer index. So basically, if I tap on the third one, the index will be 2 because index starts with 0. We are talking about an array. So now I need to check. Do I need to return the stars that are empty or do I need to return the stars that are filled? Well, how about we forget about the index and we just return the body or the outline of the star. So if I simply say icon, icon start star outline, that's what we're returning right now. This is obviously going to change, obviously, but right now we're just returning that. Okay. The next thing we need to do is now we have the stars right over here. We need to display them. So how do we display the stars? Well, the easiest one I can find is what about if we simply return a row and a row does have children where we can simply pass in stars. There we go. All right. So we're calling build body. Build body goes create five stars and then returns the stars in the row. Now let's go ahead and try to check it out what it does. So if I go to the main function or the main.dart file, inside the children over here in the column, I can go ahead and say rating. And we have to pass in the on rating selector. So what's going to happen when we actually select the rating? So this is just not going to do anything. And this doesn't look like stars. So let's go to rating and see if we have used, oh, we've used the sanitizer which is very important, by the way, these days. So I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, star. So star border outline. There we go. So we got the star. That's pretty cool that we got the stars. If we want the stars to be in the center, we can go ahead and probably say maximum uh, main axis alignment. And we can say main axis alignment dot center. And hopefully it will be in the center now. There we go. Perfect. Right? So this actually shows our stars. Now we can also tap on the stars because we implemented the gesture detector and we implemented the on tap. So let's see what happens if I try to tap on a particular star. I'm going to go ahead and say over here print index. And keep your eyes on the debug console. Okay, there we go. You can see there we go. Zero, four, zero, one two, three, four. Obviously, there are five stars, but we are getting the index because in an array, it always starts with zero. So that's why it's telling us at zero instead of one. That's not a big deal. We can obviously fix those things very, very fast. So now the question is, what should we do? All right. When we click, when we tap on a particular index, so if I click on this one right here, this one, I want these three to be kind of like filled out, which is saying that these three, it's now three star rating. So how do I do that? How do I fill this thing out? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is when you tap on something, I'm going to put the index plus one, so the actual rating, into some sort of a variable. So I'm going to go over here, create a variable called current rating, and I'm just going to assign it to be zero. 
Again, this variable is underscore current rating, which means that this is only available inside the underscore rating class. It's a private variable, private property. Now, whenever we tap on a particular star, I'm just going to go ahead and set it. So set state, because this is a stateful widget, underscore current rating equals to the current index, whatever it is, let's say 0 plus 1. All right. So that's great that we are able to select that. Okay. Now, bill rating star, whenever we set something inside the state, inside the set state function, the build is going to render again. It's going to be call, get called again, which means the build body is going to get fired. And that is our opportunity to go ahead and change the star and fill up the star. So let's go to the build rating star. And inside bill rating star, what we're going to do is I'm going to check if the index is less than current rating, current rating. If it is less than current rating, then I'm just going to go ahead and return icon, which are filled out. So icon start star and star. There we go. Just a normal star. And let's go ahead and also change the color of the star. So I'm just going to go ahead and say orange. So if you select some rating, it's going to return orange. Else, which is in this case, we're just going to go ahead and do what we were doing before, which is simply returning an outline star. All right. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and try to see what happens if we click on a star. Pretty cool, right? You can see, there we go. One star, five star, one star, five star, one star, five star, four star. Okay, pretty cool. So this is really good. This is working. Right now, everything is inside the rating.dart. Now, rating.dart is a control. So whenever you select something, it needs to tell the caller, which is main.dart or any other file who is using the rating control, that, hey, here's the rating. Here's a new rating, rating of four. Or here's a new rating, which is two. But how do we tell that person that, hey, here's the new rating? And that's the main reason that we passed in a function which is call on rating selected. Whenever we select a rating, we can pass that, we can call that particular function. So right over here, after setting the state, we can call that function. Now we have to be a bit careful when we are calling this function. All right. So let's go ahead and so set state is going to get called. What about if we call this function right here? So this dot widget dot on rating selected and passing in the current rating. Now, if I go ahead and print out the current rating over here, let's see if it prints out correctly or not. That's the important part. All right. There we go. Let's save it. Let's refresh it so that we're starting fresh. Okay. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to say four rating. Four is good. We printed out four, three rating, one rating. Looks like it's working out correctly. Okay. All right. So now we are calling this particular function, which is this dot widget dot on rating selected. And this is passing in the rating. And the other person, the caller, can now go ahead and use this. Um, you can also move this right inside the set state if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it over here. It's working. And if it's not working, then we can talk about different options. Okay. All right. So this particular on rating selected is getting fired, which means that this particular function is actually getting fired, which is in main.dart. Now inside the main.dart, we already have ratings page widget which represents the whole page, and that has a variable, a property called underscore rating. So we can now go ahead and set the state, and we can say underscore rating equals to rating. Great. Now, since this is again being set inside a set state, this means that whenever you set this, it's going to re-render call the build function again. Now, when it calls the build function again, that is our opportunity to go and display something. So I'm just going to use a size box to display some text. There we go. All right. 
So once we say rating and we set the rating, the build function fires again, and we're going to use the text to show you the current rating. So let's go ahead and select something. I'm going to go ahead and say two. Rating is two. Three, your rating is three. Four, one, five. So it looks like it's working perfectly fine, right? Now, one of the things that we didn't do is that what about if we want to clear the rating? There's no button to clear the rating. So let's go to the rating control and try to find out that how can we clear the rating. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a control that will allow us to clear the rating. Right now, we don't have that kind of a control that will allow us to clear, clear the rating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simply copy some code. And wherever the stars are, right over here in the stars. So basically inside the build body, I'm going to remove this row and add some function, which is going to add another row. So basically it's a row that contains another row. And the reason I did that is that so I can in one row I can I can display the stars and the other one uh, well the inner row can also display the button all right now when we click on the button which is clear this particular thing happens so when we click on this flat button we set the rating to zero and we also notify the caller that hey we have a new rating by the way let's go ahead and say clear and you can see that when I press clear, the text is also gone. So you have three rating, four rating, one rating. And let's say I accidentally selected one rating, I can clear it. When I clear it, everything is gone. And that is how you will make a rating control in Flutter. And the great thing is that it works on Android as well as on iOS. And it's a, it's a reusable control. That's why we created it in a separate widget folder, calling it rating.dart, and you can use it in multiple pages. So this is your basic rating control in Flutter. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then you can become a Patreon member. The Patreon link is right there in the YouTube description. And you can also check out my courses on Udemy. I have many different courses, which are ranging from SIF UI to MVVM Design Pattern, RxSwift, Combine, uh, even Flutter. I have a course on Flutter and I'm working on a brand new course of Flutter, which will be available in 2021 January. And you can see a lot of courses I have, the list just goes on and on. So if you want to support my work, then check out my courses. Now, all the course links are right there in the YouTube description. So just simply click on the link, get the course, and I really hope that you enjoy. Thank you so much, and go ahead and comment if you have any suggestions. Be sure to like the video, and be sure to also share these videos with uh, other developers so that they can also learn about this stuff. Thank you.